Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar Weekly Discussion Topic video. And we're getting close to October, which means that New York Comic Con 2017 is coming up. And that of course means another Avatar Korra panel. So, for anyone unaware, the full schedule for Avatar Dark Horse stuff at New York Comic Con 2017 has been announced. And I'll quickly go over it now, and then we'll get into a discussion on what we expect or not expect to happen. So, the first Avatar thing is on Friday, October 6th of the convention, 2pm to 2.45pm. It is a Legend of Korra Turf Wars signing with Irene Co. That, that one not, requi not requiring a wristband. A second signing of the weekend is going to be on Saturday, October 7th, and that is going to be... The Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra Turf Wars panel with Brian Kinetsko, Janet Varney and Irene Ko. That one will require a wristband. And then on Saturday, October 7th, also 1.45pm to 2.45pm, the comic book elements of Avatar and Korra in room 1A21. This is the panel. And the description says, Dark Horse and Nickelodeon are excited to treat fans to a panel worthy of Aang himself. Join Irene Ko, the artist behind The Legend of Korra Turf Wars, and Janet Varney, the voice of Korra in Legend of Korra, the TV series, for a further exploration of the world. Fans will also have the opportunity to showcase their knowledge of the elements in a fun trivia competition for awesome prizes. So, we've heard that before. That exact descrip description almost, we've, we've heard that before. So, what do we expect? Um, I think the general reaction from around the fandom at this stage is very little. Expecting absolutely nothing from this because the last few years have been nothing but disappointments when it comes to these panels. Uh, San Diego Comic Con has been pretty bad. New York Comic Con usually is better. That's the one positive thing is that yes, usually New York Comic Con ends up being a little bit more you know notable than the San Diego Comic Con panel. And then with this year, there are two things to give some hope that something will happen here. One is that even though he's not mentioned as being part of the panel, Brian Kanetsko is going to be at the convention. Um, he's part of the big signing that requires a wristband on Saturday with Irene Co and, Jan and Janet Varney, which maybe makes you believe he might be a special guest at the panel, like a surprise guest. Um, the other thing is that he did say on Tumblr, he posted that he's partly going to be at the convention because of Threadworlds. There's going to be like a poster for Threadworlds there. He's going to be signing at the first, uh, second, the what's the first, second books um, uh, table. And he said that he'll, he'll also have a separate post about like his other involvement at like San Diego Comic, at New York Comic Con, primarily the Avatar stuff. Which maybe leads me to believe that like there might be some sort of a bigger announcement coming. And because he said that and it was kind of surprising that he's actually going to be at the convention. That gives some hope that there might actually be some news at the convention. And then the other thing is that Dark Horse of course uh, just after Turf Wars Part 1 came out in social media. Just in reply to someone did say that there will be news about some sort of Avatar The Last Airbender comic, the plan for what's happening next in the coming months, and this basically makes sense as one of the places where that would be. Now, they never confirmed it would be New York, New York Comic Con, but I took the coming months at the time that they said it as being within this year, so not going into 2018 waiting for that announcement, and New York Comic Con, or in or around New York Comic Con, makes the most sense because what really why would they do it just like randomly in like november or december like with no obvious setup for it um so that that leads you to believe something might actually happen at uh the convention the problem though is that if you look at the history of these panels um the dark horse one specifically there's only ever really been i suppose one major announcement at these things they've announced little things here and there like oh here's the coloring book oh Here's a, um, you know, a poster collection. They've announced those, of course. The kind of little bits of ancillary merchandise. The only notable announcement that's ever really come from one of these, you know, comic panels has been that, of course, this is where they first, New York Comic Con in 2015 was where they first announced Legend of Korra comics. Now, admittedly there, they announced those really early. They had a different artist they didn't have any art or really much of anything to show that was like official about the comics beyond that it's going to be, you know, 
you know, about focus to some degree on Core Sammy. And that's really all that there was when they announced it. But it was still an announcement and it got people excited at a time when they needed to build some excitement. The problem is that this year, the lineup of people on the panel that they confirm, Irene Coe and Janet Varney, that is not your star lineup to announce new stuff. Especially when the new stuff is going to be Avatar, Avatar The Last Airbender stuff, if there is any. I'm really sorry, but I think that's they're two of the most boring panelists you could get in terms of like I don't feel either of them has anything particularly insightful to say about the comics um, because you know there's been so many interviews with Irene Co about Turf Wars what else can she say similarly with Janet Varney the amount of interviews that w- took place with her over the run of Korra and then because there's been no voice acting stuff that involves her as Korra since then like what is she really you know, adding beyond just like she's going to be at a signing, so they're also putting her on the the, the panel. Like, what 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 are what are we actually gonna like again? What's Janet Varney's involvement in the panel here? Because, like, they they again just go into the description, which means absolutely nothing. It's just PR stuff. They don't actually really aren't actually necessarily going to do this. Further exploration of the world, like, they're not going to do that, really. We know the way these panels work out. They'll start the panel, they'll introduce the guests, they'll do a quick rundown of the products that are out or are coming out very quickly. So in this case, they'll cover, they'll probably cover Turf Wars, uh, how well it's sold, show the cover for part two and three, and maybe North and South Library Edition, but... I was shocked they didn't mention that at San Diego Comic Con. So they might just skip over that for all we know. Um, and then they'll get into a brief talk with Irene Co, which will probably just be Cora Sammy stuff that she said a million times in all these interviews. Janet Varney will add her perspective into that. They might get her to read out some lines of Cora from Turf Wars Part 1. I could see them doing that. Um, they'll do the trivia thing, of course, which I assume they won't ask any... I assume all the questions there are going to be super simple so they give away the stuff very easily and I'm thinking again they'll run out of time before they have questions from the audience um, so I really don't expect there to be any announcement because if there is an announcement it kind of has to be what the next Avatar comic is and as I said that lineup doesn't kind of suit talking about it because you're not going to it doesn't seem like you're going to have any of the creative team from that book uh, the new book at the convention there's no one really there to talk about it. So if there is an announcement, I really feel it's going to happen either directly before the panel from like a news article and then maybe it can be mentioned or it'll happen afterwards. Uh, you know, tying into New York Comic Con and that like very shortly afterwards to have the big announcement. But it just really feels like Dark Horse, I think it's misguided. I don't agree with it. But for whatever reason... Dark Horse do not treat these panels as a place to deliver news. They just treat it as a weird type of signing almost. Like, I really feel that that's what these panels are. They're just this weird way for like, okay, you've got a bunch of Avatar fans in the vicinity of people who work on the franchise. And it's just this weird kind of marketing thing for the current Dark Horse comics that are out. Rather than being like a place where like, you basically have two times a year where you can talk directly to the people who buy your books to give them news about upcoming books, but you don't use it in that way. So it really feels like they're just completely misguided with what these panels should be. I hope I'm proven wrong, but the track record is not very good, and I think a lot of people are quickly beginning to realize that that there is basically no point in paying any attention to these panels because they are just not treated well themselves dark horse themselves never mention what happens at these panels they never cover if there's anything anything happened it's just like oh hey there's a panel going on yeah we're not going to tell you what happened in it It, and that's just the way it is with these things and i don't know why and from the podcast i i think greg and kelly are, are both going to going to be at the convention this year and um i haven't had a chance to talk to kelly in a little bit but Greg, when when I talked to him, he was just like, he's not even considering going to this panel, even though he's going to be at the convention, because there's just nothing there. And him, as a fan who follows all the news w- with me on the podcast and stuff like that, he already knows all the, the stuff that Ironco said in interviews and, and so on. Um, 
he has most of the main merchandise so like the the trivia like unless it's something really exclusive like there's not a lot there for him and it's just like yeah what's the point in like wasting all that time to line up for a panel where there's not really anything worth lining up for it's just oh i'll sit in front of these people who have had a signing earlier on the day like really like it's just it's almost like if you want to do this stuff just go to the signing that way you'll get like a free poster that goes with the signing and you'll get to meet brian as well whereas the the actual panel just seems like hey irene co and janet varney and the panel moderator will talk about chorus army for an hour like that's really what the panel feels like um and it's just like when they could when it could be so much more so um I have very, very low expectations for this, um, and I think a lot of people do. Of course, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts. Do you have any hopes for news at this thing? I really don't. It just really feels like this is a... It's a Korra panel, and it really feels like there's no opportunity for Avatar stuff to really come up. Um, Now, as for what needs to happen, obviously, we need that next Avatar book announced, um, because obviously everyone's been pretty annoyed that kind of Korra has kind of come in and kind of just taken over and it feels like Avatar has been forgotten temporarily so we need Avatar to come back and show that you know like hey Dark Horse Avatar and Korra can exist side by side you can have more than one book on the go at a time that you know Turf Wars part one has come and gone you have to acknowledge that you know part two probably won't sell as well as part one did it'll probably still sell really well but that that insane level of Turf Wars Part 1 is not going to kind of persist forever just because it's Korra. If you t- if you put out an Avatar book that is just as good and you promote it in that way, the same way you did with Turf Wars, it'll get the same level of attention. If you m- highlight that this is going to be a really big book for Azula, this is Iroh's backstory, it'll get just as many sales because you're covering stuff that people want. If there's been any problem with the recent Avatar books, it's just that they've moved away from being more impactful stories to being more, like, kind of mundane. Like, oh, here's a little story. It's fun, but nothing notable is happening for the most part. So they need to fix that. And then I think the other thing that's quite important is just other merchandise. They need to announce some other stuff beyond just the usual part one, part two, part three of a story hardcover library edition there needs to be another poster collection um you know coloring books you know i i I think we're probably done with those for a little bit but just other books like that like where's like an encyclopedia where is like a full detailed like map book or something like that where's all this other stuff that you could do in this universe and do in terms of a book um you know are, you know, I don't really think there's anything else to really do an art book with, but something along those lines. I think people would read like a data book, um, as I said, um, or just an encyclopedia. There's so many things you could do, um, like a book covering all the pro bending teams as like a sports guide to that sport. There, there's a lot of options that you have, and I, I just feel they need to make some announcements along those lines put out other like figures figurines uh, just other type of almost toy merchandise that's what we kind of need announced right now to keep everything going i don't know if they'll do it as i said the panel doesn't really seem like it's worth there's really much news to cover in it but um yeah so that's uh, more or less my thoughts on that and i'm just going to end with this uh, image i made up here myself and harrison on the podcast last time out were kind of joking about this and I brought up the idea of like, oh, look, here's the 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 Dark Horse panel bingo card. And I kind of joked that I'd make one up and I just decided, why not? And basically the idea with this is that, you know, you have your bingo card, you look out for information coming out of the panel. And as you basically hear what's actually happened at the panel, you just mark off all of this stuff. And here's the nine things that I've chosen without stretching too hard. So the first one here, uh, nothing at all mentioned on social media from Dark Horse. This is obviously in, with the idea being that Dark Horse often promote that, hey, there is a panel going on, but then never actually say anything during the panel. People are tweeting at them, they're asking them Facebook questions, all this sort of stuff, and they just never say anything that's actually happening at the panel. It's just, oh, the panel's happening, on to the next one, and it's just like, wait, wait, wait. Mm, tell us what happened and so that's probably likely to happen again 
And then the second one here, only Korosami talked about with Turf Wars. So, of course, Turf Wars is going to get talked about. But in this case, I really feel like when it's talked about, it's only going to be Korosami. None of the other plots are going to get talked about, like the president stuff and Raiko and that sort of stuff. So I think that's almost a likely thing to happen based on some of the interviews that have come out recently. Um, the third one, nothing from the guest we have not heard before in interviews. This is basically just that, okay, the, they're kind of hyping up this panel on the basis that Irene Coe is there and Janet Varney is there. But if they don't say anything of like substance, then kind of what was the point? Like, wh- what's the draw if they just say, oh, Korosami's cool. Let's talk about Korosami a little bit. Like, okay, is that... What makes that so special that you said that? So, if really nothing comes from their appearances, that's a take on the bingo card, I think. Because it's just like, wow. Unnecessary use of guests in a panel. Uh, The fourth one here is audience feedback from last year's panel not mentioned. So, this is obviously a more specific one. But last year at New York Comic Con, the one interesting thing that they did was that they had no guests because people backed out at the last minute. So what they did was that they went around the audience basically asking them in future comics like what do you want to see and like everything from the audience was kind of stuff that they weren't doing at that point in time. Most of it was Avatar The Last Airbender related and most of it was like we want to see this character's wedding, we want to see this character's past, we want to see this event happen that we know kind of happens, we want to see the specifics, um, that sort of stuff. Only a few core things mentioned, most of it Avatar stuff related, and related to characters when they're older, or characters' backstories, or like little bits and pieces here and there. I want to know if there is any sense of them, in terms of like working out what products to do next, have they put any substance on what people actually said at last year's panel? And is that actually having an effect on what is going to come out, in the sense of like, has that feedback affected what the upcoming Avatar comics are going to be? Do they have plans to do more stuff, which I think is the main thing that the fandom wants, just more content to be put out. The one in the middle, obviously the most important one. No news at all. This is the case, like, the last last year especially. Like, there was just nothing. Like, last like last year's apart from just the oh audience feedback was cool but like San Diego Comic Con for instance earlier on this year nothing nothing at all worth checking out that panel for so that's a big one uh, that is likely to happen uh, number six only Cora talked about no ATLA so this is a problem of course that affected San Diego Comic Con this year and I think also New York Comic Con last year they just didn't really mention Avatar The Last Airbender at all so I think that's another thing that's very very likely to happen uh, after that we get uh, news happens just before or just after the convention so I talked about this already but um, even if there is news this year in relation to the panel I feel that the news will not actually be revealed at the panel it'll be like a comic book resources news article beforehand or just afterwards but not the news at the panel uh, just further highlighting that the panels mean nothing uh, number eight yeah, basically this is just like a people's expectation. Expected nothing, but somehow more disappointing than you expected. So this is the definition of the response to San Diego Comic Con this year. Of just like, people went in expecting zero. And still the panel's disappointing somehow. So I think that's how it's going to be this year. And then number nine, to cap it all off. No time for questions from the audience. The one time you have a chance to let the fans have an impact on the panel. By asking a question that maybe puts someone out of their comfort zone and requires a bit of a like response from someone and they probably more than likely won't have time for the quest uh, any questions from the audience and then a lot of the cases with this as well even if there is time nothing interesting will come because usually it'll be like hey janet varney how do i become a voice actor and it's just like really you're asking the voice actor how to become a voice actor at a core panel okay like, it, it'll be usually that stuff rather than anything interesting. Not to mention this year, if Brian is not at the panel, I feel there's very there's very little to really get, I think, from the panelists this year as well. But just the fact that they don't 
they seem to really avoid, if possible, audience questions at these avatar panels is is very notable. But uh, yeah, that was just a little bit of fun. Feel free to use the bingo card if you want, and uh, tell me about uh, how you feel the panel scored. Uh, I'll be sure to do some sort of a follow up on the bingo card. But uh, yeah, that's been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.